Now let's see this permutations and combinations. It is very useful, especially for engineering students. Mm, why is it useful is, let us say you want to count something, the number of ways a thing can be done. If you want to count all the number of ways, then it is very difficult to count them in some situations. For example, let us say you have 20 players or you know, you got applications from 20 people that they all are willing to play for a college team. And now it, if it is your responsibility to find out how many teams we can form using these 20 people, how many ways we can put them in one team. And then once you find out the number of ways, then let us say you have to actually form them and then you know pick one of them. Or let's say the simple task is number of ways in which you can form a team of 11 members from a 20 member group from a 20 people group how can you do that one thing is you can take a pen and paper you can take all the 20 names and then try to write all 11 names possible different 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 ways right and if you have to do this it is going to be very cumbersome that is one thing second thing is even if you write them and then count them there is no guarantee that you didn't miss out some of the possibilities therefore especially for counting it is very very difficult if you don't use these techniques so all the techniques put together which are useful for counting is actually the subject permutations and combinations even if you want one more example let us say you have 10 letters and out of this using these 10 letters if you have to form five letter word how many ways you can take out five letters from the 10 letters and then how many ways you can arrange them if you have to count them all and if you are following the method of writing them all enumeration that is called enumeration if you are finding out you know that uh, writing out all and then counting it is going to be cumbersome and then obviously there might be some errors error prone and cumbersome so just to avoid these two we are going to use these techniques so uh, there are two ways to go about this subject I can take the concepts and then derive the formulas and then explain you and the other way is let me divide it into you know two sides like one part is I'll completely introduce you to the notations and the conventions that we use in this subject like what are the various formulas we come across and then I'll open up the formulas and show you the expansions and after finishing that let's discuss about the properties of these formulas and after that we can get into the concepts and problems that way it will be easy for me to explain and also for you to learn instead of mixing up everything I'll just separate it out so first let's discuss about the formulas okay now <coughs> the uh, most important thing that you will come across while counting is factorial you must be knowing all this but let me go through the basics once again i'll quickly cover it it will not take a lot of time maybe one hour or so I'll, I'll finish every basic that you know then we can directly jump into the questions now the most important thing is n factorial so or this is called as n factorial okay or sometimes it is also written like this n factorial can be written like this factorial n okay both the signs are actually popular now the meaning of n factorial is the product of first n natural numbers the product of first n natural numbers which means if i write n factorial n factorial is equal to 1 into 2 into 3 into so on into n minus 1 into n this is the meaning of n factorial the product of first n natural numbers for example if you are looking at 3 factorial 3 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 if you are looking at 4 factorial 4 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 5 factorial 5 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 1 factorial is simply 1 and one important thing is 0 factorial 0 factorial is not 0 0 factorial is 1 remember that and if I have a negative number and if I want to find out the factorial it does not exist okay the factorial of negative number does not exist <coughs> fine now if you observe this see this when you are finding 4 factorial 3 factorial is already a part of it because 1 into 2 into 3 is 3 factorial it is already a part of it therefore you could have even written it as 3 factorial into 4 this is important right and again when you are finding out 5 factorial 
already 3 factorial is a part of it. So, you could have written it as 3 factorial into 4 into 5 or one other way is 4 factorial is already a part of it. Therefore, you could have written it as 4 factorial into 5. What I mean to say is, you know, you can expand it out and then try to, you know, try to substitute a lower order term. For example, if I have n factorial, we know that n factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into so on into n minus 1 into n. If you see the term still n minus 1, it is nothing but n minus 1 factorial. Therefore, I could actually write it as n minus 1 factorial into n. That is possible, right? <clears throat> that is one way of uh, doing this okay so keep that in mind we shall again come back let us say you have to you want to find out n plus 1 factorial minus n factorial you want to find out what that is so knowing this one will be useful whenever you want to combine the terms or perform addition subtraction like this and very often we are going to come across these uh, such situations in permutations and combinations let's see how you have to do this it is nothing but n factorial into n plus 1 minus n factorial now what is this if you pull out n factorial as common it is nothing but n plus 1 minus 1 which is n into n factorial that is the advantage of expanding it out and writing it like that so even though there are two terms i am able to combine it into one term got it similarly you can even write something like this let us say n minus 1 factorial plus n factorial such things we we most frequently we encounter such things while solving the problems okay now how to write it n minus 1 factorial plus n minus 1 factorial into n what does it mean you can pull out n minus 1 factorial then what will be remaining 1 plus n so which is nothing but n plus 1 into n minus 1 factorial <coughs> got it so that is how we can actually implement it so if you want to know how to even expand it out okay so there are various ways we can again play with them we shall come across it once we get into the problems let us first focus only on the formulas here fine and one other you know popular formula is npr npr so the notation we expand this npr like this n factorial divided by n minus r factorial now n factorial can be written written like this 1 into 2 into 3 into so on into n minus r into n minus r plus 1 into n minus r plus 2 so on into n i'm just expanding out n factorial so that i'm showing you the middle terms also and now the denominator is nothing but 1 into 2 into so on into n minus r right now if you see them both of them this term and this term these are all common so you can delete them so simplified version is simply n minus r plus 1 into n minus r plus 2 into so on into n getting this okay now <coughs> Now that is one way of doing this. Let's see uh, some examples on that. Let us say I want to find out 10C4. Then what is the formula? 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4 factorial. Now what is 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4 factorial? 10 factorial divided by 6 factorial. So what is this? You can write it like this, right? 1, 2, 3, so on, 6 into 7 into so on. 10 divided by 1 2 3 so on 6 now you delete them both cancel out them then you are going to get 7 into 8 into 9 into 10 so this is the answer got it okay that is how we can do with uh, ncr sorry npr and one more popular formula is ncr so ncr is nothing but 
n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial yes you must be knowing about all this but i'm just i'm just going through them uh, so that you know it will be a kind of revision for you i'm just trying to brush up the concepts and brush up the brush up the basics later when i'm discussing about the concepts it will be easier for you once you go through them okay so now see this we already know that n factorial divided by n minus r factorial is nothing but that entire term so which is nothing but n minus r plus 1 into n minus r plus 2 into so on into n divided by r factorial isn't it or one other way is we already know that this this term is nothing but npr now if you want to substitute npr in place of it you can do that and and then you can find out a relationship between ncr and npr it is nothing but ncr is equal to npr divided by r factorial this is the relationship between ncr and npr right so you can remember this now we shall see even more properties of ncr npr and all okay